the Holy Gospel, according to St. John, the 15th and 16th chapters. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, When the Advent comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I'm going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate the end of Jesus' earthly ministry. And we recognize the calling that we are given as Jesus Christ passes the torch on to his disciples to keep that ministry going even after he ascends into heaven. The day of Pentecost is often considered the birthday of the church. It's the day that that spirit comes and enlivens us for our ministry. But I often wonder if we really understand what the Holy Spirit is, who the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Trinity can be confusing. When we think about the person of the Father, the Son, and the person of the Holy Spirit, how they all fit together. So I'd like to share with you the little teaching that brought clarity to me and helped me to understand Scripture and our purpose a lot. We know in the beginning of the Gospel that when Jesus is baptized, the Holy Spirit descends like a dove and rests upon him. And that Holy Spirit equips Jesus for his earthly ministry. It's in that very moment that Jesus steps forward onto the world stage and begins to bring miracles of healing and teaching into the lives of everybody that he can possibly touch. That Holy Spirit equipped Jesus Christ to be able to do things that this world had never done before, never seen before. Jesus healed people. Jesus healed lepers. Jesus made the blind to see. Jesus made the deaf to hear. Jesus rose the dead while he was on the face of this earth. You know the story about his best friend Lazarus. Miracles that Jesus was able to bring into this world, empowered by the Holy Spirit, is amazing. The Holy Spirit also empowered Jesus to be able to share the teachings that the Father has wanted us to have as God's children for a long time, allowed us to hear these things in new ways to transform and change our lives. Because of the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ, we have been shared the secrets about the kingdom of God. We have been shown what our true purpose is the Holy Spirit's empowering of Jesus Christ in this world, that like him, our goal, our purpose in life is to bring glory to God. 
And now on Pentecost, we celebrate the fact that as Jesus ascended into heaven, that freed that Holy Spirit once again to descend on us and to equip us to transform us into little Christs in this world to go out and continue on in the ministry of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ may have ascended into heaven, but that makes it possible for the Holy Spirit to descend into all of us. Today is the day that we celebrate this. The same Spirit that enlivened Jesus Christ for his ministry and empowered him for miracles, that same Spirit now rests in you. It rests in me. It rests in us as the church. The Spirit of Jesus Christ is truly a part, a piece, a defining characteristic of every one of God's children. In baptism, we are promised the gift of the Holy Spirit. And hopefully we know by now with how many times I've set it up here in church, the Holy Spirit is inside of us. The divine presence rests in each one of us. And today on Pentecost Sunday, Confirmation Sunday in our church as well, our confirmands affirm this promise for themselves. They know that God has been reaching down into their lives to transform them and help them to be everything that God wants them to be. And today, today is the day that they reach back out to God in a beautiful way. When they were baptized, maybe in this baptismal font even, but in a baptismal font somewhere in this world, the Holy Spirit the gift of the Holy Spirit descended upon them and began to transform them in ways that this world never could. They were given special charisms through this one gift, many gifts that now flow into their lives to make this world a better place. Each one of them, all 14 of them here in the sanctuary, all of them have been given unique traits special to them, that God said, I need you to be this in the world for me, for the kingdom of God, for the rest of my children. Each one of us, confirmands, those to be confirmed, those who have been confirmed, those who have been in this baptismal font, all of us, have all been equipped with this one gift of the Holy Spirit to truly make this world a better place. And confirmands, I've seen it over the last three years of having classes with you, how God has indeed transformed you. I've watched you grow, and I can't wait to see how you make this world a better place than even what we can dream of today. God has indeed transformed you. But I promise you, God is not done with you. This confirmation day is not a graduation. You're not complete with anything. This is your first real step into making the world a better place. We're convinced that you are adults and you're able to do so faithfully. Today in the reading, the gospel lesson, we read from chapters 15 and chapters 16 in the gospel of John. But if we go back just one chapter to John 14, I think there's one verse that helps us to really appreciate what's going on today. In it, Jesus tells us, and I'm going to quote it because I don't want to get it wrong. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I get chills over that. This is one of those verses in the Bible that has stuck with me over the years. It's amazing to me that Jesus tells us those miracles of healing and teaching that we saw in his ministry, he now tells us, you're capable of those same things. I'll tell you this, Jesus says, you're capable of even more. Even more than what you've seen me do in Scripture. 
confirmants, congregants. This means that we are equipped and empowered in ways that we don't yet understand. That the Spirit of Jesus Christ itself enlivens us in our ministry. That same Spirit of Jesus Christ that made it possible for Jesus to do everything he did in Scripture, that same Spirit of power and might now resides in all of us. We are more capable, more capable of making this world the place that God wants it to be than what we understand yet. When the Holy Spirit descends on the disciples, we become more capable, more powerful to make this world a better place than we ever thought possible. The only thing stopping us, we don't really fully believe it yet. At least not as much as we're supposed to. But we should. And hopefully these confirmants here today are inspiring signs for us, for the future that God has for us. Because I've seen the Holy Spirit deepen her grasp in all of your lives, confirmands and congregants. I've been here for three years through this confirmation class. This is the first one I've been through all three years with. I've seen them grow. I've watched them turn from kids into the adults that you see today enlivened and equipped by this Holy Spirit to now jump out into this world and do the work that God is calling us to. Comfort I've seen your passion for the $100 projects. I've seen your real desire to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ in this world. I'm proud of you. I've seen you create in confirmation class a safe space where people can be truly who they are and not have to hide it like they do in the rest of the world, where we can be who God truly created us to be, and I'm proud of you. I've seen you even help and heal each other, bringing love and peace into each other's lives. When Evan, who is supposed to be confirmed today, died just a few weeks ago, we cried together. We shared the gospel. We listened to the promises of Jesus Christ for Evan and for us in those moments of pain and sorrow. I miss the fact that Evan's not here. I lament the fact that Evan is not with us today. He's supposed to be. And in those moments of pain and horror and suffering that we went through as a community, Confirmance, I want you to know that my time with you brought me healing. Your faith and your strength and your hope and your love for each other in that hardest of places has been a moment of inspiration for me, and you have truly helped me to heal in wonderful ways. Your development as Christians is one that I am delighted with. God's Spirit, I promise you, has descended upon you in amazing ways. The future of this church is in good hands because we are entrusting it to you. Today, the day of Pentecost and Confirmation Day is an important one. Our confirmands are affirming their faith that their parents started in that baptismal font. God reached out to them to make this world a better place, and now they come before us to look back up at that cross and say, Here I am, Lord. And as you do that, confirmands, I want to leave you with a blessing. My final words today, may you take them to heart. May the Holy Spirit continue to light your hearts on fire. May the hope you instill in this world in our eyes be seen in your own. And may the advocate who has indeed descended upon you bring you the strength you need to work the miracles that I have the faith that you are completely 
capable of. Amen.